If I could have your attention, if I could have your attention, please be quiet. I think it's totally appropriate, keeping in mind the sacrifices being made 6,000 miles from here in the deserts of Iraq, that we have a moment of silence for those that have been lost, those that have been injured, and those we want to come home. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. It's dark here in Washington. It's dawn in Baghdad. As I mentioned, Baghdad is 6,000 miles from Washington, D.C. As we speak, we have 160,000 American troops in those deserts and towns and cities in Iraq. They're awakening to a new day the 1,582nd day of this war. 160,000 of our sons, our daughters, our parents, our friends, our neighbors are rising on foreign soil to face another day of violence, chaos, and constant, constant danger. The high temperature in Baghdad today will be about 115 degrees but our troops will wear their 100 pounds of gear and bravely go about their jobs that they're given to do. By nightfall, it's likely that some of them will die, and it's certain that more will be wounded. The rest will end another day on foreign sand, not knowing when they will come home to American soil. Those 160,000 troops are heroes, every single one of them. They're serving with courage despite enormous hardships and without proper equipment. They're serving with courage despite a president who took us to war falsely, prematurely, and recklessly. They're serving with courage despite a president who refused to form a coalition of nations to share their awful burden of sacrifice. They're serving with courage despite a president who has never had a plan for peace. They're serving with courage despite Republicans in Congress who are blocking us from passing legislation that would bring a responsible end to this war. I want everyone here tonight, every American from coast to coast, to know that we won't stop fighting until we end this war. That's what this night is all about. But we know this debate won't be enough. And this debate tonight won't end the debate on the war in Iraq. It won't end because for all the encouraging we've heard from some Republicans these past few weeks, too few of them are willing to vote the right way. It won't end because the majority of Republicans continue to ignore the will of the majority of Americans and continue to protect the President instead of our valiant troops. There are some in this audience holding candles. Candles tonight to honor those troops who made the ultimate sacrifice, and of course, all those who remain in harm's way. But you're also holding candles to shine a bright light, a real bright light on the Republicans in Congress who continue to stand in the way of progress. You'll keep the pressure on them. We'll keep the pressure on them. And together, you and we will deliver the new direction that our troops and all Americans demand and deserve. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the first woman Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi.